All right, well, good morning, as I said. Um, it's a real pleasure to have this opportunity to present um, uh, our company, Voxelate, which spun out of my lab at Harvard University about 16 months ago. And we focus on multi-material printing. And our thesis is that additive manufacturing needs new materials in order to address the myriad of applications that exist in multiple vertical sectors, from aerospace to automotive to robotics to wearables and beyond. Um, as, as James said, you know, 3D printing really emerged about three decades ago, and yet if we look at the commercial printers that exist today, most of them still print plastics in three basic forms, whether it be thermoplastic filament, UV curable resins, or uh, polymer uh, powders. Um, our, our mission at Voxelate is really to expand and solve the problems of the limited functionality of 3D printing by introducing advanced materials that can help our industrial partners manufacture high performance products. And today I'm going to describe a number of ink designs that have really started in my lab but have emerged and are, are being commercialized at Voxelate. These span everywhere from conductive ink so that we can embed electronics to epoxy inks for high stiffness, high strength um, structural materials, to flexible inks for um, flexible electronics, to topology optimized lattices for controlling mechanical properties and energy absorption, to battery inks. So what do our advanced materials enable? Well, really they enable the idea that we can now go beyond form and we can integrate function via three-dimensional printing. And the examples that I'll highlight today, as I said, span all the way from lightweight structures to integrated electronics. So let me first begin by describing our multi-material 3D printing platform. What you see here in this movie is a simple nozzle that's rastering back and forth um, and depositing a concentrated viscoelastic ink. This ink emerges from the nozzle at room temperature in filamentary form based on its viscoelasticity, its rheological properties that allow it to, to be extruded as a filament um, and maintain its shape even as it spans gaps in the underlying layers. In other words, we don't need any sacrificial support material as we build these architectures out of plane. Um, importantly, um, we've also developed um, no a number of multi-material print heads, everywhere from the tapered nozzles that I just showed, which we had four individually addressable print heads coming in and out of the field of view, to these mixing and switching nozzles where in one filament we can switch on the fly between multiple materials, to these core shell nozzles where we can print in a single filament multiple materials, and I'll highlight an example of using this for creating wearable sensors where we have core shell, multi-core shell architectures where some of the uh, shells are actually conductive so we can create a capacitive fiber sensor, to multi-nozzle arrays where we can print at very high speeds, very high throughput, because rather than printing a single filament at a time, we can print multi multiple filaments in one pass. And those can either be using a single material or multiple materials if we array those together. So our customized inks really have um, the following properties. First of all, they're concentrated. As I said, they're deposited at room temperature. They can be both on a substrate surface or coming out of plane through an air gap. This is an example of a conductive ink being deposited through a 30 micron nozzle. They're functional and they're, it's a highly flexible motif. Um, as I'll show you on the next slide, we've created materials spanning from metals to ceramics to polymers. And there's really a broad range of applications that we've addressed in my laboratory and now moving towards um, commercialization at, at Voxelate. So I wanted to begin by highlighting some of the matrix materials that we're bringing to the market. So first of all, we're focusing on lightweight architectures everywhere from rigid architectures composed of fiber-filled epoxy resins all the way to combinations of soft and rigid elastomers for flexible electronics where we can place the um, electrical components on the rigid islands, um, all the way to graded matrices through mixing nozzles that allow us to seamlessly move from one material to the other as we're printing. So let's start with um, our rigid materials. Um, here we're really trying to address the needs of the industry in aerospace and automotive and in robotics as well, where they want high uh, strength to weight or high stiffness to weight ratios and tailoring the mechanical properties. 
And um, recently, we've developed a, a suite of inks that are based on filled epoxy resins. Um, to our knowledge, this is the first time that carbon fiber reinforced epoxies have been 3D printed. And as you can see, as we're moving through this nozzle, there's a high shear stress environment that aligns the fiber fillers along the orientation of the print path. And the inspiration for the cellular architecture that I show here is balsa wood, one of nature's lightest, stiffest materials. And if we look at a higher resolution of this printed part, after it's been printed, we cure it, you can see that the fibers are aligning along the pathway uh, that we print. And we can test these, we can control their geometry. This is an example of a triangular lattice, which is really the strongest geometry for these cellular architectures. Um, and we can measure their properties and we can compare them to not only to balsa wood, but to other 3D printed materials. And you can see here that you know, relative to balsa wood, which is a cellular uh, solid, it exhibits very uh, much mechanical properties that are akin both in stiffness and strength. And if we compare that to dense solids that are 3D printed, we're about 10 times stiffer than any other plastic material that's been printed. And our stiffness is akin to the, the cell walls uh, that you find in the wood itself. So this is a very strong, lightweight, stiff material. Now, we're not confined to just these planar cellular architectures. We can also do um, three-dimensional structures, such as the epoxy lattice shown here. And this uh, nice image here just shows a higher magnification of these struts. So we're printing this layer by layer, as I said, taking advantage of the idea that we can span gaps in the underlying layers without a support material. And we can do this at very high speeds, very high throughput. We can do it using our multi-nozzle arrays, where rather than just printing one filament at a time, as the ink comes down through this print head, it's splitting at every generation. And by the time you get to the bottom here and you see these filaments exiting, we have 64 coming out at a time. So that means that if we want to print an, a large area structure composed of this lattice-like architecture, let's say areas of a meter squared, then we can do that in such a way that um, the build times are now minutes instead of 24 hours. So if, if we did it with a single nozzle, it would be 24 hours. If we did it with a 64 nozzle array, it's 22 minutes. If we added or doubled that to 128 or doubled it again to 256, you start to approach build times that are on the order of about five minutes, right? And because of this nozzle architecture, we can handle these, these long high aspect ratio fillers. So that's just one example. Next, I'd like to describe some of the work that we're doing with elastomer inks. So these are inks that are highly flexible, durable, and they have tailored soft mechanical properties. So I won't go into a lot of the detail, but this slide really captures all of the ink rheology that we have, no matter what the inks are. They have a sheer yield stress, and they have shear thinning behavior, so that as we increase the pressure that we're applying, the, the inks flow more readily through the nozzle. But as they exit the nozzle, they adopt this high shear uh, yield stress, which gives them a solid-like response. Now, just by simply changing the ratio of the base to catalyst, we can tune the extensibility or the flexibility or stretchability over a broad range. So this is an example of another type of lattice architecture that we've recently published out of the lab. And what you see here is the topology optimized architecture. We're building this up out of plane. This is 10 layers thick. This is printed using a silicone based material. Now what's interesting about this, first of all, let me describe what a Poisson ratio is. This is the ratio when you start to pull on a material, normally as you expand a material in one direction, it contracts in the orthogonal direction. If you look at this architecture, when we pull on this in the, in the vertical direction, it actually expands. This is a negative Poisson ratio, okay? This is what's called a meta-material or an auxitic material. Now, it turns out through topology optimization, and we worked very closely with Ole Sigmund's group, um, a world-renowned expert in topology optimization, we can programmably create any type of lattice structure and then programmably create any Poisson ratio from plus to minus 0.8. And you can see these lattices shown here. This is just a, a very interesting application of 3D printing. And importantly, what's interesting about these, not only can we tune the Poisson ratio, we can keep that and maintain that over very large strains, strains of up to 20%, which is actually unprecedented. So that's one example of tailoring uh, mechanical properties. That's with a single material, a single silicone ink, but changing the lattice architecture. Next, what I'm going to describe using switching nozzles, we're changing the composition on the fly to, to create and encode both stiff and, rigid and, and soft islands. So rigid islands and, and in, embedded in a soft compliant matrix. 
And this is important uh, for things like flexible electronics, as I said, where we might want to click and place components on those rigid islands. So in addition to um, the idea of having uh, the matrix materials that I've just described, you know, at the heart of voxelate, we want to embed functionality. So here, you know, we go beyond just the matrix materials. We also want to print the conductive traces, the wires, if you will. And with that capability, encode antenna, anything from antenna to wearables uh, sensors. So first of all, let me describe some of the, the, the key resolution that can be obtained by our printing method. First of all, we can print conductive silver inks at feature sizes as low as one micron. And because they're highly concentrated inks, they come out of the nozzle such that you know, the aspect ratio is nearly one. So if we look at the aspect ratio as a function of number of layers printed, even in the first layer, that first pass, if we're printing with a one micron nozzle, we have about a 600 um, nanometer high trace, right? So this is very different than something that wets and spreads. Um, and we, of course, can build up much higher high aspect ratio wall-like architectures. Now, one of the early demonstrations of, of this printing capability was to use this material to create three-dimensionally electrically small antennas. These are antennas that basically are printed conformally on, on, a, on a hemisphere, and because of, that, of their novel three-dimensional geometry, they have a 10x smaller form factor compared to, say, a planar antenna at the same operating frequency. Now, we've also recently developed um, some highly conductive but yet flexible inks. And these inks, of course, here's just an example of one that's been just dried as a film. You can see that it's quite flexible. Um, it has a very high conductivity as printed at room temperature. And we can print these into these nice serpentine-like architectures. These are encapsulated in silicone. And you can see that it has a high degree of flexibility. Now, in addition to being able to pattern these um, in the form of these extensible wires, we're also very interested in integrating electronic devices. Our thesis is not that we want to print every electrical component. We want to print the, print the matrices. We want to print the conductive wires and the interconnects. We want to print the active and passive components that are made out of these conductive inks, like the antenna. But we don't want to reinvent the wheel. We don't want to print resistors. We don't want to print capacitors. We don't want to print chips. We want to pick and place those. We want to basically have a hybrid three-dimensional printing platform that takes advantage of what traditional Additionally, electronics manufacturing does, which is automated pick and place for printed circuit boards, and combine that and integrate that with three-dimensional printing. So if we look at this example here, uh, you see, for example, we're printing resistor elements, LEDs, and we're, or we're basically wiring up a device that's a flexible electronic. And this is a movie of that. This is the sequence where we're starting with printing a soft insulating ink, then we print the soft flexible conductive ink, then we pick and place the components, as you see here. Uh, essentially, all we're doing is running one of these print heads in reverse. Rather than printing ink out of that, we're using it as a, as, a, as a tool where we pull a light vacuum and pick and place the components. Of course, you can get much more sophisticated, but this is a sort of a first demo. Um, and then you can see that as we've done that, we have these magnetic connectors that allow us to finally wire up the device and connect to an external power source. So this is just an example of a, of a printing of a, of a flexible um, electronic device. Now this is a bit more sophisticated example where we're in a single print filament, we have multiple core shell architecture. Everything that's dyed here in red is a conductive element. Everything that's white is the elastomer, the dielectric. Now because of this multi-core shell architecture, we can use these sensors as, um, we can use these wires as capacitive sensors. As we elongate them, we, we change the distance between the conductive features, and hence we can measure a resistance. So if we look at this, what we can do then is we can mount these onto um, this, this um, person's knee here, shown here, and every time he bends, we can measure exactly the deflection of the movement of his knee, right? So we can think about this as a wearable diagnostic. It's a textile-mounted sensor. All right, so at Voxelate, um, last year we came to CES and uh, we introduced our developer's kit. Um, and, and really the, the concept behind the developer's kit is to bring uh, our pipeline of materials to um, industry across multiple vertical sectors. And um, this is a desktop uh, printer uh, that allows you to do multi-material printing. And we've been very pleased. We've had a number of early adopters across myriad um, uh, vertical sectors, um, and everywhere from aerospace to automotive to wearables to robotics and beyond. 
Um, at last year's show, when we introduced the developer's kit, um, Fast Company named it as one of the best nine ideas at the show. And recently, um, MIT Tech Review named our company one of the 50 smartest companies, which you know, we'll, we'll take. Um, <laughs> uh, so if we look at this desktop printer, um, it, 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 sort of at the heart of it is uh, two, two materials. Uh, we're depositing thermoplastic filament to make the matrix, and we're depositing our proprietary conductive ink, which is a highly conductive ink printed at room temperature. It doesn't require for this desktop printer any post-annealing, thermal annealing, light annealing, or, or the like. Um, we've already uh, shipped some of our developer's kits, beta versions, uh, one of which is, is now at our, our partner, Autodesk, and I'll say more about Autodesk in just a minute. This is actually our printer sitting at Pier 9. If you haven't been to Autodesk's site, um, main site in uh, San Francisco at Pier 9, I suggest you do. It's probably they have one of the best office views you can imagine. Um, and so one of the first things they did uh, with our printer was they printed a credit card with an embedded um, antenna uh, within it. Um, so let me say a bit more about Autodesk. Um, last year, Carl Bass was here, the CEO of Autodesk, and he introduced our company, and he also introduced a project that they're working on called Project Wire, which is really uh, allows us to seamlessly integrate electrical wiring within um, our CAD designs for our desktop printer. So it allows fully embedded wirings. They have a three-dimensional component library, so you can build in cavities and pick and place the components, as I showed. And this is all part of their Spark platform. So let's take a look at how this works in practice. So um, if, for those of you who have seen anything about Voxelate before, you know that the quadcopter is one of our signature products. Um, and if we, if we look at that, um, if we use the software, first you can see picking and placing two LEDs. So we've got headlights on our, on our little quadcopter here. Um, and once those are positioned in place, um, we can go to the next, we can move those seamlessly and get them all lined up. The next movie then shows the auto wiring between, say, a resistive element and, and the LED. So this is internal in the CAD file itself. We're now routing the wire. So this is the conductive wire that we're going to be printing embedded inside the plastic material. So if we go to the next video here. What we'll see then is an example uh, of, of this quadcopter being printed. So let me walk you through this. So as I said, we've got two print heads sitting on the printer. Um, they're modular. They can be replaced. We could either have two pneumatic dispense or um, a matrix and the conductive ink as shown here. So we're switching between the matrixes in orange. This is the conductive ink being printed now. Um, it's a pneumatic dispense, it's an onboard pneumatic system so that we can add and uh, take away pressure to, to dispense the conductive ink. Um, in the middle of the build here, you now see us integrating a printed circuit board, um, and then we continue the print. Um, after the final component's been printed, we drop in the motors and the um, propellers, and we're, we're good to go. So when we, when we want to do uh, the component insertion, we can either do that directly on the printer or we can remove the, the, the bed, the platform from the printer, and it's kinematically coupled so it snaps right back in place. We also have onboard laser auto leveling so that we can calibrate the, the position distance between the two print heads and also print on conformal surfaces. So this is just a micro CT scan of the printed quadcopter. You can see the embedded circuit board and the wiring shown here to the motor cable. Um, and then this is just a cross-sectional view. Again, co-printing two materials on the desktop printer, matrix and silver ink. We can use this to create things like Wi-Fi antenna or the embedded antenna in credit cards like the Autodesk uh, example. We've also made things a little bit more sophisticated. This is a digital watch. Uh, this is the artistic rendering. You can see the embedded components. This is actually the watch here with three LEDs. I'll describe how it works in just a minute. Uh, you can see on the back side, we've got the integrated microprocessor, um, and we've got these magnetic pins that are electromagnets that allow us to couple between the power supply here, which is the battery. And then this is just a movie of, of this in real time. So first of all, we're designing this on the desktop. You can see the, the rendering in the CAD file. And then printing. So again, first we're printing the, the thermal plastic. And we're picking and placing and, and manually inserting um, one of the LEDs. Now we're writing and grabbing the traces. Now we're finishing the, the watch by. 
And this is the top part of the, of the device. Now we insert the battery and voila. So it's a pretty simple watch, actually, to see it in operation here. So that's just one example of a demo uh, of, of our multi-material printing. Uh, the, next, the next example I want to show is, uh, I think, very um, timely since we're in Las Vegas. We've got a little wireless uh, poker chip, if you will. Um, and, and we've embedded an inductive charging element there, and we can wirelessly charge up that, up that chip. And here's just another demo of that. go through all of the printing of this one, but you, but you get the idea. And there we used a, a, an actual commercial base station to do the charging, but using our epoxy matrix, uh, which can support a much higher level of, of current running through the charging station, we can actually also print the base itself. So this is an inductive charging base that we printed. Again, it's an epoxy matrix with our printed silver ink to form the inductive coil. Um, another example of, of something that we've printed which integrates new classes of material, so this is the first example of an epoxy matrix and silver printed on our desktop printer. So again, given the modularity of the printer, we can pop off the thermoplastic feed, we can put on two pneumatic dispenses, and now we're moving back and forth seamlessly between the epoxy material and the um, silver material. And then lastly, I just want to show a, a, a waterproof camera case that we printed. Here, there's no electronics in the case, but what we've done is seamlessly integrate thermoplastic material and a custom gasket made of silicone. So again, now rather than printing the conductive ink, we're replacing that one with a pneumatic cartridge that has a silicone ink in there. And this is highly integrated, thermally cured together, a waterproof sill, and this is actually for a GoPro camera. I want to end by just saying again that we're here really to create functional materials that, and partner with industry in multiple sectors um, to, to manufacture high performance products. And we really appreciate your time and interest in, in our company. And uh, thank you very much for your attention.